of our knowledge and led by the victory of Department of Geography and Geodetic Survey Bureau and this will help us in our work and in our cultural development in our own state and virtually we are here today to go to join our online Yeah. 
And our principal Dr. Rupa Dasu. At the outset, has been organized by the Department of Philosophy and Sciences of our college and has been sponsored by Indian Council of Philosophical Research, New Delhi. On this occasion, we are very privileged to have with us very distinguished academicians with us who will be delivering their lectures in the technical session later on today and tomorrow. And it is our privilege and it is our pride that this very eminent personalities from around the state come and visit our institutions whenever we urge them, despite of their busy schedules, they come from far off and really it is our privilege to listen to them when they speak in the technical session and to merely have them in our campus give us an immense sense of pride. On behalf of Debra Thana Shohit Khudiram Smriti Mahavidyalaya, our two departments, I extend my welcome and gratitude to the distinguished persons who are present here physically in the campus today and who are joining online and will be joining tomorrow. We, as our uh, IQC coordinator, Professor Shoikot Chakraborty, has already introduced uh, our distinguished speakers who are present on the dais today. I once again welcome and express my gratitude to Professor Raghunath Ghosh, Emeritus Professor, Department of Philosophy, University of North Bengal. I extend my gratitude to Dr. Lokhi Kantopadhi, Professor, former Head, Department of Philosophy, University of North Bengal. Professor Dipan Pottonayam, Department of Philosophy, Jadapur University. And the distinguished personals who are joining online, Professor Dr. Vishnu Padu Mohapatro, Professor, Department of NAI, Sri Lal Bahadur Shastri National Sanskrit University, New Delhi, and Professor Dr. Govinda Sharan Upadhyay, Acharya of Philosophy, Trihuvan University, Kathmandu, Nepal.
our college debra thana shohit khudiram smriti mahavidyalay is a young college as our uh, distinguished guests here are already aware they very much know about our college it only started its journey in 2006 and it was established on the donated land of the farmers here the local farmer who gave little bits of donations their piece of land even some donated the land where they used to stay where they used to have their residence with the single aim and purpose that uh, that their wards their children will have not will not be required to go or travel a long distance in pursuit of higher education so there will be ample opportunity for their children and grandchildren so that they pursue their dream here in debra so that was the main motivation behind establishment of this college and from that day onwards the entire team of principals whoever has the principal who started this college initiated this college the governing body members and of course the teaching and non teaching staff have strived hard towards achieving that goal organization of seminars and workshops are just a part of the our daily academic activities other than holding classes conducting examinations it is our uh, goal our objective to conduct such seminars workshops skill based training programs so that we also get enriched our teachers and teachers coming from other colleges and universities we also interact among ourselves we get a chance to learn from the experts of the field we get a chance to interact with them if that purpose is realized even to a extent in these two days our efforts will be fruitful so with this uh, few words i once again welcome and thank our distinguished dignitaries and welcome all the uh, delegates who have come here for this international seminar thank you all thank you madam now we will move on to the next next item and i would like to request dr urpita tripathi head of the department of sanskrit of this college to deliver introductory lecture नायमात्मा प्रवचने न लभ्यो न मेधया न बहुना श्रुतेन जमे वैश वृणुते ते न लभ्य तस्वात्मा बिवृणुते तनुष्याम on the eve of today international seminar on basic values embodied in indian culture and their relevance to the contemporary society i intend to pay deep respect and rigor on behalf of department of sanskrit and department of philosophy to the eminent speakers professor dr raghunath ghosh emeritus professor department of philosophy university of north bengal professor dr vishnupad mahapatra department of nayo Sri Lal Bahadur Shastri National Sanskrit University, New Delhi; Professor Dr. Lakshmi Kanta Padhi, Department of Philosophy, University of North Bengal; Professor Dr. Dipayan Patnaya, Depa Department of Philosophy, Jadavpur University, Kolkata; Professor Dr. Govind Sharan Upadhyay, Acharya of Philosophy Department, Tribhuvan University, Kathmandu, Nepal; Professor Dr. Bala Ganapati Devarakonda. professor of iccr chair for indology the university of west indies mona jamaica department of language linguistics and philosophy 
On behalf of the departments, I extend my heartily welcome to Dr. Rupadash Gupto, Principal Madam, DTS KSM, members of advisory committee, teachers, scholars, staff members, my dear students, ladies and gentlemen. I am deeply privileged to address the seminar where so many eminent scholars adorn the chairs like the stars in the sky of knowledge and wisdom. Indian culture lies with its traditions and some of the human values like truth, nonviolence, peace, tolerance, etc. These values have been referred in Vedas, Smritis, and became diluted in the latter stage. Some of the social values like honesty, sacrifice, renunciation, compassion, humanity, forgiveness, and charity, etc., continuing in Indian society since long. Despite having India's diversity, social harmony is one of the important values binding different communities together to stand as a nation state. Tolerance is other such Indian value because of which India accommodated diversified ethnic, linguistic, and religious community to exist in its soil. The literature on Indian values has developed through the ages, comes from sources of the Vedas, Upanishads, Puranas, religious practices, inscriptions, traditions, customs, and beliefs. Indian values can also be understood from Indian arts, architecture, paintings, song, dance, and music. Our culture has always emphasized the need for quality education and has opened a door of perception that education is the greatest power. It is the essence that a child carries forward in a form of a genetic chain. The transitions of natural values have been institutionalized through the abodes, as also known as the ashramas in Indian culture. Hinduism is at the center of India, and yet it is not the only religion practiced, propagated, and preached here. We have Islam, Christianity, Sikhism, Buddhism, Sufism, and other cults being followed too. Each of these religions has four primary elements that add up to a holistic education system. In Hinduism, these stages are Brahmacharya, Radhastha, Banaprastha, and Sanyas. In Islam, the, these four stages are Shariat, Tarikat, Marifat, and Hakikat. In Buddhism, too, this process is categorized in four stages of enlightenment. Satopanna, Sakadagami, Anagami, and Arhan. The first stage is that of a partially enlightened individual. The second being that of a person who still has desires and ill will, but comparatively less than the first stage. The third stage being that of a person completely free from ill will and fantasies. And lastly, a person attaining complete enlightenment who does not seek reward on their passing. Our culture does not directly teach us how to be emotional, empathetic, or how to respect and love others. But an in individual grows into these values through education through these four stages of life. The holy book, the Mahabharata, the Ramayana, the Bhagavad Gita, the Bible, the Quran, the Gurugani have shaped our consciousness. The prime importance of human rights was in the rich Indian legacy of Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, which means that the world is one family. In Indian tradition, the concept of Rita gives rise to the idea of dharma. The term dharma here does not mean mere religion. It stands for duty, obligation, and righteousness. The modern values are distinct from tra traditional values with reference to the behavior pattern associated with the current socio-cultural practices. The uni uniqueness of modern society comes from advance in the science and technology providing new avenues to the social life. These new avenues largely impacts established, established way, of, way of family and marital life in the society, bringing changes in culture, polity, economy, and society. The modern values in Indian society entail Western principles of freedom, rationality, liberty, equality, and justice mere by a split from traditional value associated with the family, marriage, soci society, polity, culture, and economy. Modernity also engulfs 
with, with positive and negative values. In fact, the modern technology has facilitated easy, faster, and simple way to take place the occurrence of negative values like crime, murder, theft, kidnap, and terrorist activities. Value crisis is also leading to increasing respectability of selfish individualism. It takes the form of exclusive concern for personal gains without any consideration for the common good. People today are only concerned about their rights without fulfilling their obligations towards others. The common ethical principle that the rights of one can be fulfilled only if others perform their duties seems to have been forgotten. Another dimension of value crisis is the common mentality of adopting double standards of value judgment, a much higher one for others and a much lower one for ourselves. At this moment, we can say the human civilization is passing through a very catastrophic period. The humanity is being trampled. The serpent of materialism is raising its venomous hood, envy, selfishness, communalism, political partnership, violent antisocial activities are rampant everywhere. And it seems that human civilization is heading, heading towards a terrible disaster. The bright shining of Indian culture, which was lit by a deep wisdom of Indian rishis, may guide the whole world in the educational, social, political, spiritual aspects of life. The secret of all power lies in control of senses. The revolutionary patriots like Shahid Thuriram received inspiration from the philosophy and spirituality of Indian culture and heritage for the political liberation of the country. Our efforts and spiritual activities should be directed towards lightening this scandal in our personal, political, social, economic, and educational lives so that we may find our way in darkening blindness. We must rise again from this slumber of object worldly mindedness, the true and genuine spirituality will help us to stand again. We must drink the nectar of immorality. This half dead society will wake up again. I would like to conclude my lecture with the recitation of Shobhata Proti by Rabindranath Tagore, Dao Phir She Aronno, Lao E Nagor, Lao Jat Loho Lostro Kashtho Prostor He Nabo Shobhata, He Nishthur Sarbograshi, Dao Shei Tapuban Punno Chayarashi, Glani Hin Din Guli, Shei Shundha Snan, Shei Gocharon, Shei Sham To Sham Gan, Nibar Dhanir Mushti Bal Kal Vashon, Magno Hoye Atto Maje Nitto Alochan, Maha Tatto Guli. Pashan Pinjare Tabu Nahi Chahi Nirapade Raj Bhog Nabo, Chai Shadhi Nata. Chai Pakkhir Vishtar, Bakkhi Phir Pete Chai Shokti Aponar, Paranis Por Shite Chai Chiriya Bandhan, Anunto E Jagote Hridae Spandhan. Thank you all. And with this uh, wonderful introductory speech by Dr. Rorpita Triparthi, head of the Department of Sanskrit of this college, we conclude the inaugural session uh, today. And we will move on to the business session. And a, the keynote address in the business se session, mm -hmm. business session will be uh, delivered by Professor Rohunath Ghosh, sir, and we were mesmerized by her speech before in this college and, uh, and his profound scholarship and wisdom. We will uh, officially release our, op our uh, abstract and I would like to request Professor Rohunath Ghosh to officially release the abstract. Dr. Koel Ghosh, head of the Department of Philosophy, presents him with the abstract. And the abstract is officially released.
now we will listen to uh, professor raghunath ghosh he is uh, we know we will be enriched with uh, enriched by his uh, lecture and so i would uh, i would like to request sir to deliver your keynote address Hello, hello. So now still good morning to all respected madam, principal madam. Who is in the chair in the inaugural session? My respected colleague, Professor Lakshmi Kanto Pati, and Professor Dipayan Patnaik. My dear students, coming from different colleges, who are now working, coming from. the distant place of north bengal they are serving in different colleges of mednapur and allied disciplines and two head of the department one in sanskrit another in philosophy we have heard a beautiful lecture from head of the department of sanskrit dr tripathi my dear students who are assembled here i know there is some transport problem in spite of that most of the students are present here to hear from us so i hope you will be your express your expectation will be fulfilled Um, by our delivery the keynote address regarding the basic values embedded in indian culture is the treasure ocean like treasure and if you want to open the ocean like treasure of indian culture where so many values are kept inside it is very difficult to get a key in spite of that key is needed to open the treasure of wisdom here my duty is to open the treasure of wisdom or values as we find in indian culture and as there is there are students from different discipline i would like to say something which is very lucid style i i will refrain from quoting much sanskrit much other words which are not intelligible to other friends but just i will try it is very a difficult question for us if it is asked what is called man what is the definition of a man if it is asked it is very difficult to answer we come across so many definitions of man so many definitions of man in our tradition let us start with european tradition plato told man is a featherless biped so the student to think over the definition of a man he told man is a featherless biped biped means having two legs and no feathers 
So man is an animal having no feather, having two legs. So this, this is the ad hoc definition of man. And the story start thinking. This is the philosophizing, which is called monon, which is called pariksha, which is called aniksha, after thinking, subsequent enquiry. So the story just enquiring about the truth of given definition of the man. And they saw there is some sort of incompleteness of the definition. What they had done something which is secondarily proof that their church definition of man is wrong. How they went to a butcher's house, a butcher shop, shop killers. A, a, a killer shop where meat are sold. They asked the shopkeeper to supply a place of chicken, keeping two legs intact and the feather should be removed. So there is a lump of flesh which is free from feather but two legs are kept intact. The students have brought the flesh covered with a platter and outside it is written, this is Plato's man. Next day when Plato enters into the classroom, the students laughed at and he saw the placard, there is something and outside it is written, it is Plato's man. After unveiling the cover, he saw there is a place of chicken where two legs are kept intact and feathers are removed. From this, he understood what mistake he has done. So there is, this place is biped, having two legs and no feather at all. So it comes under the definition of man, but actually it is not a man. So it is a kind of uh, under coverage of the definition of man. So this is one definition which is rejected by the people. In our modern perspective, we have seen so many definitions in the Western also, rationality and animality. This combining together there is a human man. Humanity is the combination of animality and rationality. This is another definition. In Ramakrishna Pathamrita you have come across a definition which is called manus, man and goose, self-respect at the same time responsibility. It is, if a human being has got these two things, then he is a man proper. This is another. Our madam can tell as a zoologist that a person having certain number of chromosomes is a man, male or female, whatever. This is another definition. There is a definition to R is human. In madam's room I have seen that if there is success, it is not fine. If there is failure, it is a not fatal. So it may come in one's life. It is, it is the staircase to go ahead. So here we can tell, so R is human. What is the definition of man? Man can commit mistake. And in 
इन चंडी यू विल सी या देवी सर्वभूतेशु कांति रूपेण समर्पिता नमस्त श्री नमस्त श्री नमस्त श्री नमो नम सो पमिटिंग मिस्टेक इज ऑल्सो दलाई लामा टोल द टू कमिट रॉन्ग इज अ काइंड ऑफ टीचर कमिटिंग रॉन्ग इज ऑल्सो अ काइंड ऑफ टीचर हैड आई नॉट कमिटेड एनी रॉन्ग थिंग इन माय लाइफ I would not have learned anything from my experience. So there is another definition of man: to err is human; to e double err; to commit mistake is the characteristics of a human being. There are lots of definition of man, but one definition to me or to many scholars. of our indian tradition is that that a human being with morality is the true human being a human being minus morality is a kind of animal or beast and which is taken from very famous sanskrit line which With which all of you are acquainted. Dharma no hina, pushu bhi saman. A man minus dharma is equivalent to an animal. Dharma here, madam rightly told, not religion. Righteousness. Dharma is justice, nay, niti, moral. in the sense dharma has been used a human being with morality is real human a human being externally human being but internally an animal if he is minus morality so dharma no hina pashu bhi saman and one of the moral philosopher and also grammarian bhorti ho he wrote three shatakas one shatak is called shatak means having 100 approximately shlokas on boiragya he has written not a mundane thing like shringar romantic love he wrote 100 poems Slokas and also on Niti. Here he told that we are seeing nowadays that Bharti Hari's time, the situation is bad, more bad now, worse nowadays. But at the time also, there are certain person who are externally a man, but internally an animal. and he told that they are moving in this society in the form of man but externally they are man internally they are beast 